All right, time to talk about what happens today in history. We will commence with the, the Equal Pay and Sex Discrimination Act that came into force in the UK on this day in 1975. Now, when the Equal Pay um, Law was, there are two separate bills, but they became law and was enforced on the same day. Both were hailed as radical uh, new laws to change some the 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 BBC actually captioned it a battle of the sexes um, mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that there is um, um, equality. However, as with many laws, uh, there was um, uh, those who say it was too radical to introduce the two at the same time. But let's look at the um, issues around the bill. Uh, Parliament passed them separately, like I said, but they were implemented on the same day, and they were described as radical legislation whose impact was far-reaching. They would later be superseded, uh, superseded by the Equality Act 2010, uh, but the act stood for 35 years. So it was, it was of use for 35 years in the UK before a stronger law came in uh, to um, overtake it. Now, there were some issues raised that I'd like to mention because, I mean, even today we can still relate um, yes. with them. Um, that was when I realized why they say firefighters, not firemen. These are some of the you know, sy yes, synonyms change, that were yes, okay. changed at the time. Uh, sex discrimination uh, by employers unless they employ five or less people will be seen as a crime and they will be fined. A job advertisement uh, was said to be sexless. You do not specify that you require a female marketer, for instance, oh. as we have uh, sometimes with uh, business, um, I mean, banks that say they require female, you must be within a particular age frame. They should emphasize an experience and capacity to deliver um, on the job. So uh, for 25 years, it was agreed that the act helped close the disparity gap. According to the BBC, uh, this gap was from 40 to less than 20% on this day in history. So the UK Equal Pay and Discrimination Act came into force. We, if, if we relate it to what we have today, we still have pay disparity. Uh, the, those that are naysayers at that time still exist today. Uh, they don't believe that there is everything. The equal, I mean, if the uh, conversation around equality has really gained enough ground, mm -hmm. wouldn't still those, see people who are calling themselves feminists, we want to, you know, entrench equality and all of that. So the conversation continues even today. What laws do we have in our country that encourages, uh, you know, a closure of the disparity, equity, equity yeah. in pay. You see a male and a female doing the same exact job. And if you go, and then the secrecy around pay. We talked about the guy that invented um, uh, something, the transistor at yes. some point, And he was seen as a radical because he chose to publish the... Um, uh, names and earnings, of his, earnings of his people. And they said that was causing bad blood and all of that. But can't we get to that point where people in an organization know what each other is earning? So you know that your work, to some degree, um, is appreciated enough by the organizations you work for. So yep. we needed to highlight that. I'm, I'm, I'm not very, I'm not 100% sure, you know, you know, what the situation is like here in Nigeria with regards to... Uh, pay uh, differences between male and females. Uh, if you go to banks, you go to the hospitals. You know, I don't think they really discriminate between sexes. You know, when they when they're talking salary, I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, but uh, you know, another thing I'm going to also mention on a lighter mood is the the fact that there are certain jobs that you don't need to specify the sex that you want when you see. <laughs> <laughs> when, Why have I already laughing? He hasn't even finished what he's going to say. <laughs> when I'm you laughing. See driver wanted apply within. You know it's not going to be. A but at least, at least that. now we have uh, female Uber drivers. We ha yes. we we had interviews with some of them at some point. Yes, I think those yes, interviews have been uh, taking off. We have you know I've I've entered yes, vehicles. There's, there's females you know, uh, that are so, taking on certain roles. Uh, I'm just saying. You, know, you, you mentioned. I get you know, I get that. I get you though. I get where you're going with <laughs> anyway, that. Um, so yes, it's a forty. Years um, anniversary today that you know this started 19 
75. It's more than, as you know, it's more than 40. I I wasn't Um, born then, but I'm closer. (laughs) um, So, yes, um, for everyone who, you know, stood up for those laws and ensured that there was some, you know, level of equity and um, equality with regards to the pay gap between male and females, you know, kudos to them. There was also, you know, some research that showed that 25 years after that law was um, um, set in motion, um, there was only a 40, uh, you know, there was only a drop from a 40% difference to a 20% difference in the pay gap uh, between yeah. male and female um, workers. So hopefully, you know, they continue to fine tune and continue to make it um, um, better. Let's also quickly talk about a guy called John Duffy. He um, was an ex-railway employee um, in uh, the UK. Um, and on this day, December 29th in 1985, he um, confessed to his very first murder. Um, he attacked a 19-year-old girl called Alison Day, um, abducted her from a London train, and killed her. There's some, some things about the story that I'm going to share. He also stated, um, or started rather, his crimes in 1982, but of course his first murder was in 1985. Police investigators, um, when you know they saw that there was an increase in rape and crime, and there was very likely a, a serial killer on the loose, um, started a forensic investigation, compiled a psychological profile, of the possible suspect, and a list of about 5,000 people were put together. Uh, John Duffy was one of those people on the list. He was an ex-railway employee, and um, he had you know, been arrested for violent crimes in the past, um, and so he was part of that list. Forensic investigators, over time, were able to match the strands of fiber from one of his uh, sweaters uh, to the fiber found on two of his victims. Um, and that was one of the things that eventually got him arrested. You know, the, um, the thing about this story that, um, uh, to be honest, miffs me badly is the fact that we still have rapists today walking the streets free. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just one person that was caught many years ago. But, yeah. to, ago. but today, we have cases of women. The other day, um, uh, I saw a story about a young lady who took her life after she accused her uh, mentor and pastor, or so or her father, yes. of rape. She took her life. And it started long know, ago. Yes. And, and it, it, she has endured this for many years. We have cases in court. We have celebrities, even today, still being accused of rape. And it doesn't seem like a lot has changed. Uh, we, we talked about equality in pay. But when it comes to equality, Quality in rights that we're not the weaker sex we're not the weaker sex in the real sense of the word we are the stronger sex mentally maybe physically we might not have all the strength that men have oh you're looking at me but I'm, I'm saying arguing. I'm dropping I mean, I, the I, truth I, I mean I would agree you know I would agree no, I mean to know, a great, certain degree you know, it's not fair degree. that because of the nature of our physical disparity I, I know that there are certain things that are not equal Yes. And cannot be our physiology, for instance, is uh, for instance, it's not the same. Men are built differently. Women are built differently. So oh, uh, I wouldn't go. Too I completely far. agree. You know that society has, you know, been unfair to sexes in different ways. Uh, society is unfair to females in specific ways. Also unfair to males in specific ways. Um, and we all, you know, generally need to do better and have, you know, a certain level of, of empathy, knowing what you know, our societies are like, you know, you don't need to wait for a government or new laws for you to treat, you know, the opposite sex better. You yeah, need you to know, I, 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 do I did a documentary about the 16-year-old that was raped and some of the things that came to mind and that comes to mind when the conversation around rape is uh, being um, trashed is the transient nature of the crime, the inability to collect adequate yes. evidence to lead to a conviction. So it's more like a moral question. She said, he said, you know, and there is that room always to disparage what the lady, you, you see questions even among elites yes. that say, what was she doing? She must have done something to trigger this. Yes. So the- as much as yes, uh, it's today in history and it's about as uh, a rapist, I think the conversation we should be having is why it persists and, Duncan years uh, after. Well, I mean, crimes. You, I, I don't know if you know. There's going to be a time when we don't have crimes, violent crimes, robbery, rape, uh, murder. There's, there's going to be all these things in existence. What we need to do better with is um, investigating and prosecuting and changing our mentality towards the uh, 
power that some men feel they have over a woman's body and the lack of self-control that a lot of men have um, over themselves. And that's why they have these very flimsy, stupid excuses as to why they committed uh, those sexual crimes. So those are some of the things that we need to work on. There's currently rape kits, you know, that have been in existence for a bit. And, you know, most girls advise that if you are sexually assaulted, you should immediately run to a you know, health hospital, care um, hospital um, and hope yeah, that well, they I, I know we're out of those time on this, but let me just quickly chip in that. Um, I saw a, a tweet the other day that resonated with me. For those who accuse men unjustly of rape they should have a punishment for them as well because we know that some women are capitalizing on the heinousness of the crime to ruin lives and it must be said yeah. whether we like it or not so if it is found that a woman falsely accused an innocent man of rape or a man falsely accuses a woman of rape Please, let there be some law about it. Maybe the person suggested two years imprisonment. I would suggest 10 years. Yeah, but, but I mean, because, because these things are still being fine-tuned, you know, that there's um, obviously a struggle with being able to prove rape, depending on how long ago it happened. Nobody was there. He said, she said, like, oh, she, like you mentioned. And so I feel like, the, you know, as we continue to have these conversations and we continue to put our foot down on certain things, we will continue to fine-tune uh, the um, the ways around these things and the persecutions around you know sexual assault, um, but it's it's, it's it's an extensive conversation. One you know thing that I, have, I um, would mention about this particular story about the guy John Duffy is something that Professor Tomori mentioned yesterday, and that um, we've gone sixty years and we still haven't been able to get some things in check. And I'm saying that with regards to our forensic investigation in Nigeria. 60 years after independence, and we still have a lot of things that we lack with regards forensic investigation. And we very, very likely would not have been able to... I'm sure that there are serial killers walking around Nigeria. I'm sure that there are serial rapists walking around Nigeria. But we, we haven't been able to develop forensic investigation in the last 60 years to get to a place where fiber can you know, be enough to find you guilty. Mm. Fiber from a, from, a, from a sweater. Mm. It is much more. <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> All right, let's talk about something else that happened. Uh, this uh, is more about leadership. It's the 1996 uh, signing of an agreement. Um, on this day, uh, Guatemalan civil war came to an end. So there was a signing by the rebel groups and the president at the time. So it was 36th year of the civil war fought between several leftists and groups representing the indigenous people and the poor and the government. So the commandant, Rolando Moran of the Guatemalan National Revolutionary Unity and the president at the time, Alvaro Azu, signed the peace treaty under the supervision of the UN. Both of them went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize for their role in bringing peace uh, to that country. Uh, it was described as uh, Central America's longest and most brutal uh, civil war. Now, let me just uh, quickly highlight some of the issues there um, about the war. It was captioned in some piece as rebels versus wealthy elite. While poverty and social injustice sparked the conflict, the war, the Cold War at the time, added fuel uh, to the fire. But the main reason, uh, this is according to a political analyst now, Michael Schiffer, um, why it burned so long, 36 years, lies, according to him, a sharp ethnic division. The indigenous population is a majority, unlike the other Latin American countries, they're very deep-seated divisions. It takes a long time uh, to agree. Uh, in spite of the, uh, the agreements that ended that war, the cost of the war, that's the part I want all of us to um, think about, um, it's yes. yet to be addressed. The disparity between the rich and the poor. Poverty continues to plague that nation. And um, yeah, we just that's, wanted um, to mention today. And then just, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, and go then, on. 
uh, just opposed uh, it to what we have, the leadership crisis we have in Nigeria. People are already saying uh, that um, Nigeria is a failed state. There's an argument back and forth. But some of the issues that was raised in that war, you can find a, a, a resonance here yeah. in Nigeria. There's poverty, there's unemployment, the rich seems to be amassing even more, and the poor keeps grinding to the ground. So, I mean, that's what happened today. In and, 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 you know, on the, you know, one of the details, you know, was the unfair land distribution in uh, Guatemala then. Um, it says that mostly because of issues of unfair land distribution, uh, European descendant, uh, descended residents and foreign companies were getting um, uh, very, very huge favors and uh, stealing land from the local poor residents. And that's one of you know, the major things. It also is important to note that this war led to the loss of um, at least 200,000 lives between um, 19, when did it start now? 1960, I believe, to 1996. Um, so it's it's um, it's a huge huge loss to the people of Guatemala, and of course there were there were massacres, there were genocides, there was so much of it that went that happened in the space that the war lasted. War is never a good it's thing. Never... Let's avoid it at all cost by yes. building a better society here in Nigeria. That is the only Absolutely. way we can avoid it. Because if people continue to feel disenfranchised. Uh, dehumanized, maltreated, their voices silenced, you know, their livelihood crushed, it gets to a point when they become too frustrated to care about the consequences. Absolutely. All right. Stay with us. That's what we have to share with you today. Today in history, uh, 29th of December from many, many years ago, and of course as recent as 1985, actually as 1996, <laughs> this is the last one we just shared. Uh, we're going to be talking next about the possibility and the idea behind fake COVID-19 results in Nigeria. Um, it has been stated by the Lagos State government that investigations will be, you know, carried out and, of course, the buyers and the sellers will be prosecuted. But how much danger does that pose to the Nigerian community in a, a time of a pandemic? Stick around. We'll be joined in a bit by a public health um, um, personality and uh, a public health physician, sorry, and an epidemiologist on the show this morning. Stick around. <laughs> 